next meeting. Um, as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Bow. Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Anna? Here. Heidemann? Here. Ka? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Vu? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 16 present. Thank you, Sue. Uh, before we get into the Pledge of Allegiance, if I can ask all aldermen to put your microphones on today. Uh, we have a, a new sound system here, which automatically uh, picks up anybody who is speaking <coughs> so that any roll call votes or whatever that are done uh, will, be, uh, will be heard uh, uh, over the air. Uh, now for our Pledge of Allegiance, if we can uh, be led by Alderperson Clyunas, please. And Gene, if you can go to the mic at the podium. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> we have uh, approval of the minutes of the former Common Council meeting. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. If there is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Public forum? None. No public forum. So we get right to my favorite part, uh, the mayor's announcements. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank our city clerk, Sue Richards, also known as the nuts and bolts of the city for being here this evening. Um, Sue's mother passed away yesterday morning. And Sue being the dedicated person that she is, is here tonight. I told her I wouldn't. Uh, uh, drag on about this and but uh, if you see Sue breaking up this evening it's not because it's the start of another city scandal or anything it's because uh, because of, of uh, the situation the, the stress that Sue is under and she is in our prayers her and her family and her mother and thank you for being here Sue. Um, otherwise in the in the mayor's announcements I'd like to uh, congratulate our uh, WSCS uh, TV uh, 95 and 990. Um, the, they are the proud recipient of eight cable programming awards presented at the Wisconsin Association of Public Educational and Government Access Channels. Uh, so we congratulate them for that. Out of uh, uh, 140 entries, they won eight awards, which is, uh, is, is quite the accomplishment. So congratulations to them. Also, I'd like to take this time to thank three outgoing alder persons on our council. <coughs> alder persons Clyunas, Surik, and Vu. Um, you've served your city well. It's very easy for people to sit in the background and to comment on the way the city operates, but until you actually get into how it operates, uh, you don't know. And I commend the three of you for stepping forward and for doing your part for the citizens of our city. Um, although maybe you and I did not agree on every issue, which we shouldn't, that's why it's called a democracy, um, you've all done a very proud job of representing your constituents and of representing the city of Sheboygan. And I thank you for that. Anybody like to say anything else? Even though it's the mayor's comments time, the mic is wide open. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I would like to uh, say it's been a pleasure having uh, Alderman Surik as my vice president of law and licensing. <coughs> also, Alderman Vu has been a member of my committee, active member this year. <coughs> also, 
special thank you to Alderperson Clayunas. Uh, we came in in 2006 along with Alderman Hanna, and it's been a pleasure for me to serve on the Finance Committee for the last four years with Jean. She's always a uh, prepared, brilliant woman, and did an excellent job on that committee. It's been a real pleasure, Jean. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. On behalf of the entire council, uh, a, a debt of gratitude goes to the three individuals you mentioned. Uh, you were correct in your comments, Your Honor. You really don't know the time commitment, the, the family commitment, and the, the nights you do remain sleepless uh, or waking up in the middle of the night over things we're dealing with here, and only these three fine individuals uh, would understand. So in some cases, I, I uh, kind of envy them a little bit. <laughs> uh, they'll sleep a little better, but I know their heart is with Sheboygan, and I also want to thank Sue Richards because I think your quote, um, whether planned or not, really, I think, expresses uh, the situation with Alderperson Surik, Clay, Eunice, and Vu. As it read, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live them. And these three individuals live them every moment since they took the oath at that, at that podium. Thank you again. Thank you, President Kisha. <clears throat> Alderperson Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to thank, first of all, um, the city employees. Uh, I got to know a lot of you, and I really appreciate your insights and your knowledge. I learned a lot from you. And working with you on committees was a great learning experience and a great uh, chance for me to appreciate the city from the inside out. I also want to thank you, the council, um, for your friendship. Uh, many of you became friends of mine, um, and we became, I, to, I consider you a family, a uh, family that argues <laughs> and uh, discusses, but we all have the same purpose, which is to uh, better the city of Sheboygan. And finally, I'd like to thank my constituents in the city of Sheboygan citizens for the trust and um, insight you gave me on your understanding. Uh, some of the issues were very difficult um, from the time we hit the floor, um, but you always seem to listen and to try to see both sides. And I really appreciate that, even if it wasn't the side that you wanted. Uh, I think we, we, we came to some good understandings, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. And again, I thank, I thank all aldermen for serving, for serving uh, the citizens of this city. Consent agenda. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Vice President Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, item 2616, uh, resolution uh, 2200910. I would like this item referred back to the new committee of the uh, Public Works Committee. Okay, 2616, an RC by Public work, Works recommending filing resolution number 220-09-10 by Alderperson Kittleson regarding a contract for the move, removal of city trees. We have a motion to refer this back to the, the Public Works Committee of the new council. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion on this? Alderman Hanna, did you want to discuss this issue? I heard something else. Okay, if there is no discussion, uh, discussion on this issue. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Al Alderman Decker, did you want to discuss this issue? Yes, please. Um, I'm going to have to vote no on this for uh, one reason. A constituent of mine back, I would say, back last July, I think it was, um, ran, us, ran into some trouble when we were dealing with Stevie B at that time. Um, it ended up him getting a disorderly conduct while working with the city. That, in my book, is a very serious issue. Um, we've discussed this now two or three times. It was uh, the whole committee's recommendation that we drop this issue. This is a problem. Um, I guess so we've got to ask ourselves what the quality of service we want in the city. Yeah, is he coming in with a very good price? Zero dollars? Yeah, that's great. But uh, for me, I... Uh, not going to be held liable for another situation like this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Decker. 
Any further discussion? Alderperson Kittleson? Thank you, Mayor. I guess I, I would have to agree uh, with uh, Alderman Decker. Our committee did discuss this. Bids did come in. I think we had about six of them come in. Um, all the way ranging, a, a large range of, uh, of numbers, one at zero, and the next lowest was at $38,000. We know what our budget is like uh, at this time, so uh, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we had, did vote to file the whole communication and know that our own city workers would, uh, would be cutting down trees this summer. And I know constituents have called, and they are being put on a list, and, and as they're, it, it, our workers have time to work this into their schedule. We'll be trimming trees and cutting down dead trees. But the committee did come to a consensus on this, that zero, uh, that we voted against um, uh, accepting Stevie B's offer. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Clyunas. Any further discussion on, on this issue, which is referring back to committee? Or Kittleson. Kittleson. <clears throat> Sorry, Jean. Sorry. Oh, both Jeans also. Mm -hmm. um, on this issue, any further discussion? I hear somebody beeping here, but I can't see any lights, so I don't know what's going on here. No? If uh, Alderman Hanna? No, I'm still no. waiting. You're for still waiting else. for the next subject. Okay. I don't, patient, I don't know patient. why things are beeping here, but it's a new system. So, um, uh, Can we have a roll call vote on referring Please. back to committee? Uh, and I vote we'll refer this back to committee. Warren? Aye. Falk? No. Bowers? Aye. Decker? No. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koch? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Zurich? No. Vanderweel? No. Vu? No. And Wangaman? No. 11, I'm sorry, five eyes, 11 no's. A motion fails. It will remain on the consent <coughs> agenda. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? Alderman Hanna. Thank you. I'd ask that 26-4 be pulled out for a separate vote. <coughs> 26-4-by the City Plan Commission recommending granting <coughs> Quality State Oil Company the privilege of encroaching. You want this for a separate vote. Very good. Please, thank you. Okay, so uh, the consent agenda is uh, 26 1 through 26 3 and 26 5 through 26 21. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Now 26-4, uh, an RO by City Plan Commission recommending granting Quality State Oil Company, Inc. the privilege of encroaching on portions of Whedon Creek Road located at 1211 Whedon Creek Road. Alderman Hanny, you would like to abstain on this issue, I take it? Yeah, I, I need to abstain. I manage money for one of the owners. Very good. Thank you. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Isha? Aye. Hannah? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bau? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 26-22 by Alderman Hanna from the President of Rebuilding Together Sheboygan County Incorporated requesting that the electrical and plumbing permit fees be waived for all Rebuilding Together homes in the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask for this to be suspended. Uh, the project that we're dealing with begins this weekend. Uh, what the Rebuilding Together is asking uh, is that we waive the uh, plumbing permit fees and the electrical fees. We already waived the building permit fees and the dumpster fees. This makes us consistent with the way the city of Manitowoc works with them. Very good. So we're uh, <coughs> motioning to suspend motion the rules. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Uh, 
Under discussion on suspension of the rules only. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There's no opposition. Rules are suspended. Um, Alderman Hanna. I move that we uh, place the, com the communication be accepted uh, and that we grant the request of uh, rebuilding together. Second. Very good. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Boren. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Alderman Hanna, do you know how many homes they work on and about how much revenue that would be if we waive those? I wish I, I wish I did. I, you know, I know they normally work on you know, 10 to 15 homes a year. They've done over 300 homes in our community. Mm -hmm. It's almost silly because we give them the money. I remember. And now know. we're charging it back to yeah. them. So it's, it's, we're just trying to be consistent. They're doing a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a lot of volunteers, and I know they've done, you know, 300 plus homes in, in the Sheboygan area. So I don't, I don't have a specific number. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Any further discussion? If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Reports of Officers 2, 26-23 by the City Plan Commission recommending approving, approving the Capital Improvements Program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for 2010 and adopting the 2010 Program for Implementation. Capital Improvements. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If they're under discussion, Alderman Hanna. I just wanted to, to thank the, the group for the capital improvements group for increasing the amount of money we're going to be spending on, on sewer projects uh, long overdue, and I'm glad you guys stepped forward. Thank you. On the mini sewers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. <coughs> Any further discussion? Roll call. Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Fayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Powers? Aye. <coughs> Decker? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Resolutions introduce three. Uh, 26-39 by Alderman Gisha granting a 90-day extension of the residency requirement for the police chief. And also with this, we are going to take 26-53 by salaries and grievances recommending extending the time. To be oh, did I miss the to be referred? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Backing up here, to be referred, 26-24 through 26-38. How's that? Yes. All right. Now, 2639, as I've already read, and we're taking with that 2653, uh, which is by salary and grievances, recommending extending the time frame for the <laughs> chief of police for the residency requirement for an additional six months until January 2011. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, if I may, uh, our new police chief has purchased a, uh, a lot in the first district, I might add. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm sure he didn't know that when he, when he purchased it. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, he did. Uh, and uh, actually just down from older person uh, Surik's home. Uh, and uh, is under construction at this time of a, of, a, of a home. They've broken ground, things are moving along. And uh, we felt rather than waiting to the last minute, understanding the construction timeline, that we would be proactive and ask that a 90-day extension to accommodate his physical movement uh, into the city. Very good. Under further discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I don't have a problem. I'm going to vote for this. But on 2639, the last line, it says, said extension shall be effective until October 18, 2010. <laughs> and then... The document number 2653, six months, recommends that the six-month extension be granted until January 2011. I would presume the January date is the correct one? Yes. Yeah. No. That would be a 12 month. Uh, President Kisha. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Yes, uh, Alderman Boren, there's some date discrepancies uh, uh, because technically uh, our ordinance allows for a, the committee dealt with a six-month extension, but our ordinance is only allowed for a 90-day extension. Thus, the uh, resolution calling for a 90-day extension, which would trump the uh, report of committee 
uh, the date on the 90-day extension is accurate. October 18th. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Anna? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Todd? Aye. Hiddleston? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Grinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 26-40 by Alderman Gisha. Waiving contingency. We still have to act on 2653. Oh, oh 2653 is along with that. I move the ordinance be put upon the passage. No, no. Report it. Yeah. Okay, I move that the uh, reported committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We want to file it. Yeah, actually, file we're going to want to file that because we went with the motion to file. <laughs> second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second to file under I discussion. Where it was. I screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> if there is no discussion, all in favor of filing, say aye. 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 Opposed. Document is filed. Now 2640 by Alderman Gisha waiving contingency and authorizing a contract for improvements at the wastewater treatment plant facility. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, I, believe we need to suspend the rules. I don't believe we need to suspend the rules. No, Your Honor. Um, bad, just bad note on my part. If I may, on a, uh, uh, we had this document uh, come through our committee actually several times. We were waiting on some, uh, and it had been approved several times, I think, in committee. The, we were waiting on some contingencies uh, and holding that. Now we're in the period where releasing those contingencies and actually doing the work uh, it requires this document as a final action. Very good. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. <clears throat> Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. <coughs> Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. Six, 16 ayes. Sorry. <laughs> Motion carries. 2641 by Alderman Gisha establishing the composition of the merged group health insurance and wellness committee. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, I'd just briefly like to uh, thank Attorney McLean for doing some mop up work on some of these committee merger stuff. That's what this does. It, so you don't have like two massive committees, it, it breaks it down into uh, more of a manageable group. And I thank him for that. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Just a, a, a quick uh, uh, mention here. I, I want to just say thank you to Alderman Surik for serving on the uh, insurance committee with me. It was great working with him. We had a great working relationship with group health and wellness. And uh, as I thought about it, it is a good thing to, uh, to merge the two together because many of the same people are on that committee. And then with one less alderman, we you know everybody's time is valuable and, and uh, it, it works well that way. But again, lots of thanks to, to uh, Ed because uh, we always discussed everything and we had a, a, a real good working relationship. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? <coughs> If there is none, roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surak? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 <coughs> ayes. Motion carries 26 42 by Alder Persons. Heidemann, Kittleson, Bout, Gisha, and Koth lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire summer help, 10 lifeguards, and four bridge tenders for the Department of Public Works. Vice President thank you, Heidemann. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion? Okay, we discussed this at salary grievances. We need to <coughs> lift the hiring freeze in order to hire some. Uh, Summer lifeguards, and also we're going to have four bridge tenders, and these people are going to be people that will be brought back from people that were laid off at the Department of Public Works. Very good. Thank you, Vice President Heidemann. Under further discussion, Alderman Boren? Alderman Heidemann answered my question. Thank you. Very good. Alderperson Kittleson? Thank you, Mayor. We're, uh, did we need to suspend the rules on this as well? Were we going to? 
we had discussed that in, in salary and grievance, that we would suspend the rules in order to get this going, hiring uh, the uh, lifeguards and the bridge tenders for, for summer. This, this so. will pass this evening, correct? Yes, this yes. will pass. So Very good. Thank is, you. Thank if you. it passes, I mean, you have to vote okay. for it first, obviously. <laughs> um, Alderman Rindflesh? Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm assuming that um, these positions were within the budget. Uh, just has, we need this resolution to let the freeze to allocate funds for these positions. Uh, budget question, uh, Terry Hansen. Bill. Uh, Bill Bittner, our director of public works. However, it did take some amendments uh, that were handled through the Finance Committee because the money wasn't, with, with the shift and differencing of cost, the money wasn't all in the right place. So there was some uh, Finance Committee changes, but they were in the line items, and so we have this committee, but it is budgeted. Very good, thank you. Um, just a statement <coughs> then. Um, very similar situation occurred a few months ago, or a few weeks ago, where we had positions that were budgeted for, but uh, had to go through exactly the same process. And of course, I'm speaking about uh, the four firefighters that we were using as well. Um, I guess I don't see the difference between these and the four firefighters. I know we're going to put, uh, you know, we will need to hire lifeguards so we don't put people's lives at risk. That makes sense to me, but you know, I came home Thursday night and there was a motorcycle on the intersection of Weeding Creek Road and a car hit that um, and there was calls out that, that uh, you know, I didn't see a fire truck there right away because who knows what had it came from at that point in time. So I really can't support this because I think, to me, it's, it's more vital to staff to protect our homes from fires and uh, our citizens uh, in the case of accidents and, and ambulance runs. Um, so at this point, I won't support this unless we do both because they're both in the budget. They're both uh, allocated within our budget. Uh, I don't see why we can lift the freeze for one and not the other. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rindfleisch. Alderman Hanna? Yeah, just just a point of information shouldn't this have come with the uh, fiscal information form should this have come with the it is authored by co-authored by Alderman Gisher the <laughs> fiscal information yes, it, form. It, it should have contained the fife you are correct we saw it in committee yeah we had a fife and so it's secret just, right. <laughs> secret fife yeah. we'll get you a copy <laughs> President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, my friend, Alder Person Hannah, Hannah, which I don't often say, was absolutely correct. Uh, he, uh, the fight form would have answered those questions. That's why, uh, although some people make fun of it, the questions regarding the budget and so forth as to whether it's in or out would have been answered by that. And we did have it in committee. We had it in committee, but it just isn't attached to the document at right. this time. Right. And in speaking to uh, our summer help, lifeguards and four bridge tenders, um, uh, we, uh, we are going to be bringing back, uh, per our contract, laid off workers. But the citizens need to understand that we're going to be down about 20 individuals working summer help in the city. And this isn't trying to pit people against each other. It's just they have a right to know, because those 20 individuals kept our lakefronts clean, painting the railings on the riverfront, kept everything neat and tidy. And we're down 20. Uh, because although we're bringing back these individuals who were laid off for budgetary concerns, they're back at their wage. Right, they're back at their wage for part-time work, correct? No, they're back at their wage. Full they were work. when they were there full-time. They do not get benefits or with some retirement service or any of the additional benefits. But because of that, it sucks up mm -hmm. rather than a bunch of eight or nine dollar an hour folks we used to have. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or indifferent. I'm just saying people have a right to know that there's going to be less stuff done because of that, that issue. Uh, I'm sure our people coming back will work just as hard, but you just don't have that many of them as you would. So we're gonna be down about 20 and people should have a right to know that and know why. And this is a uh, contract issue also. It is a contract issue. Um, and uh, uh, <coughs> there was the ability for this not to happen, but uh, it, again, contract stuff being contract stuff, it is what it is. Uh, I don't think anybody had a problem with the lifeguards, but when you're paying bridge attendants, a wage such as that, and they normally work 
very many more hours than an eight-hour shift, you end up, it becomes a scheduling nightmare for DPW because suddenly you're at double and triple time. Of course, they're always open on the weekends and holidays, which would be uh, multiples of their hourly wage. So it's a, it's a difficult task for Bill and his crew. I just wanted to give it, let the public understand that if you see a weed here and there that you normally don't see during the year, that's probably why. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Buck. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was actually just going to uh, comment on what uh, President Gisha said, that uh, um, they could be coming in at Schedule X, which would be a fair <coughs> part-time wage with no benefits, and instead um, the same work is going to be done by someone making two and three times the amount uh, that the work that the market would say the work is worth. So, again, as you uh, march toward November, remember that. Thank you, Alderman Bob. Alderman Wangaman. Thank you. Your Honor, I, I agree with uh, Alderman Rinfleisch. A couple of weeks ago, we turned down the four firefighters. And I don't know, in my mind, either we have a hiring freeze or we don't have a hiring freeze. I think if we uh, council would, when they adopt these hiring freezes, take into consideration that some serious things can be caused because of it. And uh, we all voted for the hiring freeze. We adopted it. And now it seems like every little while we're being asked to lift the hiring freeze. So I can't support this document. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> if I understood uh, Director Bittner correctly, the money that was transferred was in a public works account, but it's being transferred over to another account. So that money was budgeted to public works. This, this, this money that we talked about a couple of weeks ago about hiring the firefighters, is, a gen is, is in the general fund. It does not have necessarily have the fire department's name on it. If we would have transferred the money from the general fund to the fire department for the four individuals, then it would become fire department money. This money that we're talking about for public works is in public works budget already. It has their name on it. We're just switching it to a different account. So just want that clarification. Thank you, Alderman Boren. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to uh, comment, and Alderperson uh, Wangaman makes a good point. It's been brought up before regarding do we have a hiring freeze or don't we have a hiring freeze. We have a hiring freeze, but the hiring freeze, if you read the resolution, allows for exceptions. Uh, I wrote it, and I did that because I don't believe in zero tolerance policies. You have to use your best judgment, and you have to have options available. And this is precisely the case why you would have an option available for lifeguards at a... Uh, at a municipal uh, uh, swimming area. Also, it, uh, the, the basic purpose of the hiring freeze was that any additional hires, rehires, part-time, Schedule X, full-time, would have the council's stamp on it because of the need to keep our pay and benefit structure in line. So the hiring freeze focused all these exceptions, which is allowable in the ordinance, it's written right in there, uh, and gives the council a chance to make these decisions and have these types of discussions. So the actual the ordinance is doing exactly as it was written. Thank you, President Gisha. There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Fionis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 26-43 by Alderman Gisha authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 <coughs> budget establishing appropriation for the digestion and solids thickening improvements to the wastewater treatment plant facility. President Gisha. I won't go into great detail this, but I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. <laughs> Second. And uh, pardon me, I, I've just been informed we need a motion to suspend. Have I? Second. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. As an explanation of suspension, it has to do with the timing out of the different bids and so forth. Very good. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Is there any opposition? If there is none, rules are suspended. Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. 
Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Cock? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 26-44 by Alderman Boren directing that all boards, commissions, and committees of the City of Sheboygan call an organizational meeting within 45 days of the confirmation of the mayor's appointments for the 2010-2011 council year. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Mayor, uh, I was in consultation with uh, Madam City Clerk on this and in the past, there have been some boards and commissions that have not met at all or met very late in the year. And this is kind of a housekeeping thing, I believe, that uh, if for, uh, these boards and commissions and committees, if they meet within 45 days and at least have an organizational meeting to elect their president and vice, or their chairman and co-chairman, then later on in the year, if there's a reason to meet in an emergency, they've at least got their, uh, their officers uh, uh, selected and uh, it's my understanding uh, the initial meeting in, in talking with Madam City Clerk that the initial meeting for any of these boards and commissions when your appointments are out and confirmed any member of that committee can call the initial meeting uh, within 45 days and then they can go from there thank you very good thank you Alderman Boren any further discussion Alderman Hannah yeah just a just a quick question what happens if they don't meet <laughs> yeah. What do we do? Well, another issue is is that they, the new member they need to take an oath, and we've over the years tried to get them to take an oath to come into the office. And it's fruitless to get people to come into the office. So typically, we want them to meet sometimes so that they can at least take the oath. Sure. But if they don't, we're not going to go and tackle them. I guess. I, oath police. <laughs> yeah, the oath police. But that's not what we're going to do. But this would maybe push the committees or whatever to just meet once and. I think it's a great idea. It's just that if they don't meet, we'll refer them to Chief Domogolski. There you Perfect. go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Great. Any further discussion? <laughs> if there is none, roll call, please. We can do it all eyes on this. Oh, let's do a. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Uh, 2645 through 2648 to be referred. Report of Committee 5, 26 49 to be referred. Reports of Committee 6, um, 26-50, we're going to hold for 26-54. Um, 26, 51, and 52 to be referred. 26-54, we are going to take 26-54 and 26-50. 2650 by finance recommending filing documents sub submitting the Capital Improvements Commission 2010 capital improvements plan and approving the plan and 2654 by finance which is reports of committees eight by the way by finance recommending approving the capital improvements program by the capital improvements commission for 2010 and adopting the 2010 program for implementation president gisha okay you've got a cheat sheet notes mayor i don't uh your honor i i think i'm moving to uh um put the report of committee 2654 and report of committee 2650 upon their passage? Yes, to accept and adopt. Accept and adopt uh, pardon me, accept and adopt. And uh, put the report, the resolution 2160910 upon its passage and uh, that's accepting the report of officer 48609. Very good. Do we have a second on that? Second. second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. If I might, uh, 2623 that you previously acted on 16 to nothing that really uh, passed that resolution and adopted the capital improvements program so uh, file yes. additional documents from other committees I guess there your honor I amend my motion to file 2650 and 2654 second we have a motion and a second to file under discussion if there is none all in favor say aye Aye. Aye. Opposed? Documents are filed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. 26-55, by Public Protection and Safety, <laughs> recommending amending resolution number 13-07-08, as amended, which established the ambulance service in the fire department so as to reduce the minimum number of ambulance staff 24-7 from three 
to two. PPNS, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to ask um, Chief Herman a few questions. Chief Herman. Thank you, Chief. Um, to vote for this would be very hard for me, but I want you to answer some of my questions about the financial impact on the city of doing this, the safety of the community of doing this, and would any of this have to be done if we had replaced four of the seven who retired? Yeah, I think, first of all, I'd like to correct the statement that Alderman Bourne made before that the money for the four firefighters was not in the fire department budget. It is in the fire department budget. Um, to answer your question, uh, financial impact, um, we estimate between 175 and 200 calls a year we will be handled by the third ambulance. Um, I don't plan on shutting that ambulance down for the entire year. Uh, I'm anticipating six months at the most. Um, so if you took half of those calls, um, that would have to be covered by one of our uh, other responders, Orange Cross or Manitowoc, Plymouth. Um, billable amount, probably somewhere between um, 80 and $100,000. Uh, collectible, 40% of that amount would be the impact. <clears throat> um, from a public safety standpoint, and this is the one that I also um, really struggle with, uh, back in 2007 when we put the business plan together to take over the ambulance service, the first plan that I submitted was to just staff two ambulances 24-7 <coughs> with a third as a backup. Strictly from a business standpoint, that made the most financial sense. The council at that time, uh, led by, I believe, Alderman Susha, really uh, held our feet to the fire and said, we want you to staff three med units 24-7, uh, the same as Orange Cross was doing. And I'm glad that she did that. Um, it's a much better service because of that. And I think this is really where um, private enterprise and public safety really collide. It's those 200 calls. And this was really the main reason that I, as a firefighter that had been in the system for so many years, really pushed for us to get into the ambulance service. Because it was those 200 calls that we were sitting there waiting, eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes over 20 minutes for an ambulance to come. And it was probably because Orange Cross also realized that financially it didn't make sense for them to dedicate three ambulances to the city of Sheboygan. So they were using their third or second one to go to Kohler, to go to Sheboygan Falls, to go to Howard's Grove, and to run to Milwaukee. That's the same issue that we're going to run into now if we brown out that third ambulance. And I do believe there will be an impact on public safety. Thank you, Chief. Did that answer your questions, Alderperson Montemayor? How about the, um, <clears throat> would we have to do this? Would we have to retire an ambulance even for a short time if we had been able to replace four of the seven who retired. No, that, this is the reason that we have to do that. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Cert. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm gonna vote no on this too, and, and well, I, I voted no on public protection and safety in the last council meeting, because I have a concern, and we, we talk about budgets. Um, we have a general fund, which seems to be this slush fund, and yet the fire department brought monies into the general fund, is that right, Chief? and then lost, lost those revenues, I shouldn't say revenues, the monies, uh, to other services for the city. And here we're talking about reducing the ambulance service when actually the money's there in the budget and in the general fund. Would it be not a simple matter to move that money from the general fund and back into the fire department and not have this kind of problem? That's, that's Thank you, Alderman Sir. Alderman Borden. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I'm going to probably need a clarification from uh, Director Hansen on this, but uh, I don't believe that the, that 
the money that's in the general fund, the $180,000 to fund these four people is in the general fund and would have to be, if we would have voted to approve the four hires a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> then that $180,000, my understanding in the general fund, then would have been moved to the fire department budget. That's, uh, then why were, we, why were we even voting? I mean, if you had the money in your budget, then why didn't you go ahead and hire the people? Uh, we needed the two-thirds majority because of the hiring freeze. That's what, that's what you were voting on. But I, my understanding, the money is in the general fund, and it had to be moved over to, because there was not a transfer of that money made at the end of last year into the fair department budget. That was my understanding. And then I do have a follow-up on something else the okay. chief said. Um, Terry Hansen, our finance director, if you can have some input on this, please. Thank you. Um, there was a portion of that funding that was coming from the ambulance <coughs> fund into the general fund, and that was the cause for the need for the budget amendment. And then um, otherwise, if it was just within the general fund and reallocating dollars, the finance committee would have had a vote on that, and they could have handled that just in committee. Um, but the main reason why the council had a vote and get three quarters was because there was funds coming from the ambulance fund to the general fund for a portion of those positions. Okay, so... So technically, technically, it wasn't in the, technically, it wasn't in the fire department budget. You were having to transfer ambulance funds into the general fund and then to the fire department, correct? There, there was a portion of ambulance funds, yes. Okay, so then it's incorrect to say that all of that money was already in the fire department budget. A uh, majority of the money was available in the general fund and needed to be reallocated, but there was a portion that was ambulance fund, so. Okay, so what I said cor originally was correct then. All of the money was not in the fire department budget. Correct. Okay, understand that, Chief? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, while Orange, Cro I don't want to get into this whole ambulance discussion. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks. But one other thing you said <clears throat> is uh, when Orange Cross had the ambulance service, there was a committee supervising that, that Orange Cross ambulance service. And it's my understanding that Orange Cross made all of their required times while they had the service you know, maybe one or two times, but to say that you were waiting 10 or 12 minutes for an ambulance I think is incorrect because there was a quality assurance committee that was in place and they were meeting all of their required times. It was my understanding. Uh, the times that they needed to meet, which are the same times that we need to meet for that quality assurance committee is six minutes or less response time 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. And we were waiting for ambulances 10, 15, and 20 minutes. How many, time, how, many, how many times? Dozens. Oh. Then why wasn't that brought up when you had quality insurance committee uh, meetings? Because it was never an issue. I don't believe that this is the issue we're discussing now, but they were meeting the response times of 90%, six minutes or less. They did meet those times. Okay. Well, you made it sound like they weren't. If we can uh, get the discussion back on track. Yeah. Alderperson Koss, please. Thank you, Mary Ryan. I'm just curious why we have a budget. We voted, 15 out of 16 aldermen here voted on a budget, 70 personnel, and close a fire station. Then there was talk of closing two fire stations. And then we, not me, but uh, then there was a vote to get a half a million dollar pumper truck. Now we're looking at closing a fire station and taking out an ambulance. I mean, we voted on 70 personnel and closing a fire station. So today with this vote, we're going to still close a fire station and take out an ambulance. Correct. Then again, why do we have a budget? I am living okay. within my budget. The problem is we don't have enough paramedics on staff to staff if, three ambulances 24-7. If I may, what we're, what we're discussing under this resolution um, uh, by public protection and safety is reducing the number of ambulances from three to two, the mandatory number of ambulances. That is what is under discussion this evening. Alderman Bowers. Thank you, Mary. Um, this keeps coming back and back all the time. And now we were in public protection and uh, we voted to pass this resolution. What happens tonight if it isn't passed? Um, if I may clarify, uh, the reason that this resolution is, is up here tonight is because it, it came out of public protection and safety and has to be voted on by the entire council. The reason that this has to be voted on by the entire council is because 
in the original, um, was it an ordinance or a resolution, it stated that we must staff three ambulances 24 seven. That's why, we're, that's why this is being discussed this evening. And the discussion is whether or not to mothball uh, for X amount of time that third ambulance. So it did go to public protection and safety and came to the council. It's under discussion by the entire council because the entire council has to vote on it. Well, if we vote not to pass this, what happens then? There isn't any money. How can he put three ambulances on the road? And we're paying a lot of overtime, obviously, if that answers your question. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman, Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. And um, to reduce the minimum number of ambulances staffed 24 seven from three to two, I'm gonna have to vote no on this as well because it's just, it's simply unacceptable to me and to the citizens that I serve to reduce the number of ambulances from three to two. It's unacceptable. Thank, thank you, you, Alderperson Kittleson. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm gonna vote yes for this because uh, well, because it, we don't really have a lot of choice. Uh, you can't have it three ways. You can't say no more staff, and you can't say you want five stations open and you want three ambulances to run. You can't do that. That just, it's impossible to do. Uh, you can't say no to all those and expect there to be no repercussions. Now, I, I am comfortable with two ambulances serving the city. Uh, the prior service provider in Sheboygan had zero dedicated ambulances serving the city. And I, I know the response times have been far superior than we've ever seen in the city's history with its quality assurance with the fire department. <coughs> I mean magnificently far superior and that equates to lives being saved. But it's a, it's a matter of a high deductible insurance policy is really what we're buying here. We're having a little higher deductible insurance with two than three. Uh, I think we can manage um, in a above average, above adequate way with two ambulances considering our previous experience about 18 years was with none. So uh, I think two is still a, <coughs> an uptick in performance and expected performance of the safety of the citizens of Sheboygan. I think the fire department standards are very high and they're exceeding those standards, but you can't, you can't say no to it all and expect nothing to change. That's okay if you say no or whatever, it's, it's all what's in your heart and what you guys wanna do, this body wants to do individually, but then you have to realize there's a follow-up and, and, and change has to be made to, to have happen after you say no. And this is one of those changes. Uh, and, I, and I will vote for ye yes for this, because I have faith in those individuals doing the service. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Rindfleisch? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, actually, my original point was to uh, clarify, which you've already done so, so uh, re remarkably, so thank you, um, about what uh, Not too often I get things on. right par you know, regarding <laughs> parliamentary <laughs> process, so thank you for Excellent that compliment. <laughs> And uh, my name's on this document, um, not willingly, because as you know, I, I, I support keeping five stations open, which also leads to three ambulances and so on, with the four hires. Um, however, though, uh, the six that voted uh, not to hire, these are the consequences of that. And as you said, if we don't approve this and we force the fire, sta sta uh, fire department to staff three ambulances, our overtime costs are going to go through, absolutely through the roof. And I don't even think that it's going to be possible, even with overtime, we're, you know, we're, we're fire, kind of firefighters who are never going to be sleeping at all or not going to have any family time at all or, or anything. So um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to support this uh, document because of that. Uh, but again, uh, for the chief to know, it's with a heavy heart, and it's not because I think it's, it's the right thing to do. I think it's uh, we now have to do it. That makes the most sense, and I'll follow the direction from the chief. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Marinfleisch. Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question, Chief. So if we go down to two full-time, there are 175 to 200 calls that would be covered by Orange Cross. They would be, in effect, our third ambulance? That would be in a full year if we shut it down for the full year. Okay. Um, I, I might plan on browning it out on the days when there are two paramedics off on vacation. Then we'll okay. And what response time, will the current agreement with them, now that they're not our primary ambulance service, do they still have to meet 90% of those calls within six minutes, is that still the terms that our relationship is with them? I don't know that that issue's been uh, discussed specifically, but I would think that that still applies. Um, the question is, um, 
which station will they be responding out of, but I would think that they would still have to live by that. Okay, the future chair of public protection and safety, I bet, might want that answer uh, within a couple of weeks, so why don't we explore that? Uh, and then secondly, to determine my vote on this, Mr. Mayor, just another quick question for uh, Director Hansen. Um, a few weeks ago, we were going through scenarios, and one of the scenarios was don't hire the four replacement firemen, get out of the ambulance business, and I thought at the time you said the net net on that uh, would have been a loss of about $180,000. Is that still the case, Terry? <laughs> I believe it is around 225 when the numbers started coming out, but I haven't looked at it in a while because we just went through our audit, so I'm not as brushed up as I was going to be for the upcoming Okay, meeting. sure, but in a but $35 million a year budget, we're talking somewhere in the $200,000 a year loss if we, uh, we didn't hire the four, we get out of the ambulance business altogether, we save ourselves all these dialogue, and we get the ambulance service back to Orange Cross, um, it's around a $200,000 savings. Or, sorry, a $200,000 loss that we'd have to find and make up. I, I'd say probably about two twenty-five, two fifty. dollars Okay, quarter, I, and, and quarter. I'm trying to remember back okay. to, to what the number is. But on, were, on but. scale, that's, that, we're in the right proportion. Uh, so that's something we very might, as a, as a future body, may <coughs> want to consider is um, let's just get out of it uh, and, and then find what the right size. Chief, then, thank you, uh, Director Hansen. Follow on question for the chief. We're not in the ambulance business anymore, and you're at the current staffing level. Um, what's the right staffing level if we're out of the ambulance business? Do you need all the firemen you have now if you're not in the ambulance business anymore? How many stations do you want open? Um, four. 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 At least. Four. Call it four. So right what we have now, no browning out, just close it down. Um, the current staffing level would be su sufficient for four, but you have to remember you have to reduce me by four people that that ambulance is paying for, in addition to the 200 and... Right, 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 and that was part of why it's only two hundred and fifty-ish thousand uh, dollars because we got rid of four more people. So at today minus four, does that adequately staff you to manage four, uh, four fire department, uh, four de uh, stations? I'd have to look. We'd be real tight. Okay, but it's doable. Something for this future body, the future members, to consider. Thanks, Chief. Um, I have a feeling this will probably be discussed by the new council at one point or another. <laughs> Alderman Sirk. Yeah, I, I, a question I have, again, is that the ambulance service did generate monies. I don't Correct. use the word revenue, we'd say it's profit. And it went in the general fund. And now I can't understand why that money can't go back to the fire. But it's kind of like giving your money to the bank and say when you need it, you can't have it back. I mean, we have a need here, and it's a very good one. I, I disagree. I think, I think the ambulance service and the fire service fit together like a glove. When you have an auto accident, you need an ambulance there. If you have a fire, you need an ambulance there. It's great to have what our, our fire. But the question, again, is... Why can't the fire department get their money back and use it to save, a, save some service? Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sirk. Um, Alderman Bauk? Yeah, thank you. I, I can answer just my to, friend just to follow uh, Alderman up. Sirk's question. Um, f one thing for me is that uh, why uh, they do fit hand in glove. But what I learned in the negotiations uh, of the last year is that public firemen are really, really expensive. And uh, we may be able to run it better for our taxpayers if we let the private sector manage the ambulance business. And I was intimately involved in the business case that established the ambulance service, so I can answer Alderman Sirk's question. The reason that money goes into the general fund is because that was a promise made by the fire persons right. that put forth that business case was, we're not doing this to grow our own rice bowl. We are doing this to do what's right for the city. We are doing this to generate funds for the city. We don't want those monies to come back for us because then it looks like we're doing this for self-serving reasons and that we could grow our own empire. Uh, so that's why the money doesn't uh, go into the fire fund. It goes into the general fund because that was their wishes. That was They wanted to generate funds for the city. And uh, my mind has been changed based on my negotiation experience to think that in the long run, I don't think it's the best thing for the city anymore, whereas three years ago as a naive new alderman, I thought it did. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Yeah, you made a comment if we uh, don't pass this tonight, uh, it goes, we pay them overtime. Well, that comes out of the general fund too, doesn't it? The overtime? Or does that uh, no, out the of their budget? The overtime will come out of the fire department budget until they're out of money, and then they're until going they're to have to get money out of, money out of the general fund, correct? 
Yes. So if, because if, if we have a mandate that they will have X amount of ambulances staffed, um, we will have to pay overtime if we don't have sufficient personnel to staff them. We are the, the Common Council made the rules that we will have three ambulances. And so, yes, uh, the fire department will use their overtime budget until that is gone, and then they will come before the Common Council and request more money out of the general fund in order to staff overtime. All right. I think you had answers it. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Alderman Rinfleisch, one last time. Yes, thank you. Um, just response was a question regarding Orange Cross and their backup. Um, unless there is uh, some kind of mutual assistance agreement right now uh, that they would provide backup service with us, we disbanded the uh, Ambulance Oversight Committee as a council. It doesn't exist anymore. Correct. Uh, we don't have a contract, as far as I'm concerned, with <coughs> Cross to provide service to the city within a certain time frame. I think they're at, it's at will if they're <coughs> mutual assistance agreement to help out or not, but I don't think that necessarily has to follow those very specific guidelines. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I know what we did was we voted to disband. That, that oversight committee does not exist anymore. Thank you, Alderman Member Flesh. Okay, we have no more lights on this issue. Um, if I may just have some input, and this is not directed at a vote one way or the other on, on, uh, on, on the ambulance issue this evening. Um, just to give everybody a little history, I mean, the Common Council voted, I believe, three years ago to start the ambulance service. Um, we've invested a lot of money into the ambulance service. The ambulance service, whether you like it or not, takes fire department staff that a lot of times would not have, would not be actively working because there's only so much you can do when your primary duty is firefighting and it puts them in a revenue generating system, which is called the ambulance. <coughs> we have the staff to do it. Um, how the, this subject has gotten so turned around, now myself, I was on the Common Council when the ambulance was, service was passed, I voted against it. But this seems to be an issue that just goes round and round in circles, and I'm looking forward to the new Common Council addressing the issue, addressing it head on, cutting out the political sideline that is, that is going on here, and coming up with some answers. We can't continue to go round and round and round on a subject and make no decisions. If you're going to say no to one thing, there's repercussions. If you say yes, there's also repercussions. And everybody knows what those are. Yet we seem to go round and round in circles. So I'm looking forward to the new council coming on board, taking on this issue head on, and coming up with some, some solid long-term answers. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your comments. Uh, the reason why we're gonna have this discussion with the new council is because six alder persons had the courage not to go along with hiring these new people until we had a further discussion of the issue. And part of that discussion uh, is gonna be the scenarios that our finance director comes forward with. Uh, had I had more information three weeks ago, I may have voted to hire the four. But I said we did not have the information at that time. We still don't have the information. And, that, and whoever is our new committee of the whole chairman, I hope calls a meeting within a week or so so that Director Hansen can give his scenarios so that this council can move forward on either hiring these four, staying in the ambulance business, getting out of the ambulance business, but let's have the discussion in a week or so, and I don't see this as politics at all. I just see this as a wise use of taxpayer money. I don't see any politics involved in it at all, at least not from my standpoint, there's not. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Okay, but the question at hand is uh, resolution number uh, 2655 or RC number 2655 resolution 130708 as amended. Uh, we're all out of lights. Roll call, please. Everybody know what you're voting on? Oh. Repeat, please. Yes. Could you repeat it just for? Uh, you're just voting to accept and adopt the RC and pass the resolution, which as you read what it is. Okay. Yeah, thank you. This is angle, which is from two, three the, to two. The resolution authorizes the chief to idle, idle an ambulance as needed. Okay. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. 
Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. No. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. No. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. Aye. 11 ayes, 5 noes. Motion carries. <laughs> Okay, onward and upward. Uh, ordinances introduced 10, 26-56 by Alderman Gisha, amending, repealing, and recreating various sections of the municipal code so as to merge the Sheboygan Commission on Fair Housing Practices and the Board of Housing Appeals into a new Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Housing Practices. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, I'd like to thank Attorney McLean for doing some cleanup work so that we don't have committees with 3,500 people on them, as I originally had proposed. <laughs> Thanks for catching that, Attorney McLean, and uh, uh, just kind of push together the composition. We, we need to suspend the rules on this one, too. Uh, motion to suspend. Second. Motion to suspend in a second, um, obviously, because this is the end of the council year and we're going to be passing these, these new committees. Um, any opposition to suspending the rules? If there is none, rules are suspended. <laughs> President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second on the general ordinance. Under discussion? <coughs> Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just want to make a comment. There are a number of pages to this ordinance uh, that should not uh, <coughs> stress you, uh, it's really no substantive change. It's all procedural changes to merge the two committees. So it's a lot of terminology changing in a number of different sections of the code, but there's no substantive changes uh, as to the roles of the Board of Housing Appeals and the Commission on Fair Housing Practices. They're just now one committee. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wonkeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Um, 26-57 through 63 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2583, RO number 484-09-10 by the city clerk submitting as a matter of record information received from Carol Lutz regarding the dates for rockets for schools as being May 6th, 7th, and 8th, 2010. I'm looking for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 25-89, resolution number 215-09-10 by Alderperson Gisha, authorizing executing an agreement with ACOM Technical Services Incorporated to provide consulting engineering services relating to infrastructure upgrade of sidewalk gap filling. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderperson Clayunis. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a question that um, will the services from ACOM be paid for by the Sheboygan County Non-Motorized Transportation Fund? Will that be incorporated or does the city have to take on that even That's though it's the ours. same project? They don't, um, I don't know the answer to that. Could I ask uh, Paulette Enders, city government person? Paulette? <coughs> <clears throat> I don't believe so, though. City Director of Development, Paulette Enders, coming to the podium. <laughs> Thank you. It is being covered by the non-motorized transportation funding. Thank you. So Thank you, Paulette. Any further discussion? Okay. Thank you, Jean. If there is none, roll call, please. Zurich? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 
16 ayes. Motion carries 25-77, general ordinance number 60-09-10 by Alderperson Kittleson amending section one of general ordinance number 93-07-08 so as to freeze the mayor's salary at the current annual rate for the period May 2010 through April 2011. Alder, <laughs> Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, ask for a motion to put the ordinance upon its passage, please. Second. Under discussion? Under discussion, we thank you very much for oh, raising your salary. To thank let you. you know this is not the council being nasty, I, uh, I requested this. So. And thank you thank for sponsoring you. it, Alderperson Kittleson. You bet. We appreciate it, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I want to apologize for Alderperson Heidemann. Any, any further discussion or snide remarks? <laughs> if there are none, roll call, please. Van <clears throat> Excuse me. Vanderweel? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? No. Kittleson? Aye. Quayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Surak? Aye. 15 ayes, one no. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 26 64 will re be referred to the Public Works Committee of the New Council. 26 65, also going to Public Works Committee of the New Council. Um, 26 66, a resolution by Alderperson Kittleson authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a lease amendment with Malt Scoop Corporation. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, I guess I would like to refer to uh, <coughs> our city attorney, Steve McLean, who can kind of explain the uh, lease agreement. I believe this was with the Duke of Devon. Who can explain further? Thank you. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, this relates to the Duke of Devon. Uh, several years ago now, they, uh, they talked about adding a deck onto their premises. Uh, we had discussions about amending the lease to uh, allow for a deck to be added onto their property. Uh, <coughs> the deck was built without the lease being entered into, uh, so in effect they were encroaching on city, city property there. Uh, this came to light again when the, recently they requested a sign permit. Uh, the plan commission approved the sign permit permit contingent on this lease amendment being executed. Uh, the, uh, the malt scoop is the LLC that runs the Duke of Devon. They have agreed to this now, uh, but this was never approved by council several years ago. We proposed it to them and it kind of sat in limbo for several years. So now uh, in order to get things moving, we're asking that it be acted on now. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Once again, we don't have an address. I thought this was on uh, New Jersey Avenue, so obviously this isn't, <coughs> right? This is um, down at the riverfront, the, the Duke of Devon. Um, yeah, that's, but mm -hmm. by reading this, I would never know this. I would think it was on New Jersey Avenue. There's no address on any of these again. Is there some way we can get addresses on the, these documents that come before us? Uh, yeah, I'll work on that, uh, Alderman Bowers. This, this was uh, drafted about two or three years ago, and that's, you know, I updated the dates, but uh, I didn't think to uh, put in any addresses in there. So this, this was done before the, uh, before the request for addresses was, uh, was as prevalent yeah. as it is now. I should comment that this does proportionately increase the rent. The rent, uh, as many of the shanties down there, is currently $1,200 a year. Uh, it increases it uh, pro rata to $1,350 a year. Okay, thank you, Alderman Bowers and Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. And Vanderwood? Aye. 
16 eyes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. Attorney McCreen, McLean. 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 2667 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. That will go to the Law and Licensing Committee of the New Council. 2668 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into agreement for the sale of the 1996 Pierce Heavy Rescue Vehicle to the Village of Cedar Grove, Wisconsin Fire Department. And that will go to the Finance Committee of the New Council. Before we adjourn this evening, I would like to uh, wholeheartedly thank everybody for a, uh, uh, what do we call it, a, a very interesting year. Um, it was. Uh, we've had a lot of challenges on this council. I personally had a lot of challenges, and I think we all did. Um, however, we made it through a year, and I'm looking forward to the next year. Tomorrow evening is the first meeting of the new Common Council. Again, I would like to thank Alder Persons Clyunas, Surik, and Vu for their service to the city. Thank you very much. Motion to adjourn, sign and die. Second. Motion to adjourn, sign and die, and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody.